So I'd love to know a little bit more about your background too, and I'm sure some of our viewers would as well. Where did you study? What, what, and how did you evolve your very personal sense of style? <laughs> I love the way you're dressed today with your Hawaiian print and this contrasting, you know, yeah, colors, textural, half these crazy, furry, thing. lively <laughs> top you're wearing. Um, how did this all begin? I don't know where to begin. I, I think that it began with having a family that was really supportive of uh, being creative and uh, mm -hmm. learning art and mm -hmm. crafts in all the different forms. Mm -hmm. So your parents were really... Yeah. My mom was super, super uh, encouraging and supportive ever since I can remember. My mom was a, mom was a dancer and she's a writer now um, and always just recognized that we are creative, different, special people, and and you know, are are inclined to be expressive and, and share with the world in, in you know these different media and ways. And, mm -hmm. um, Is she a teacher? Mm -hmm. She's a dance teacher. She owned a dance studio for a while. <laughs> what did you study in college? In, uh, you in art school, college? I went to art school. I went to. I started off in community college, and another really influential experience was uh, spending a semester in Italy where you're just mm. surrounded by art, art that has been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. How old were you when you did that? 19. Great influence, huh? Yeah. Everyone should go travel and, and be somewhere where the cultural is, whether the culture is really immersed and surrounded by art all the time. It really changes how people just go about their day. And, and so, you know, I came back and wanted to be around more more understandings that loved art like right. that and you know found art school has changed you yeah and I went to uh, to CCA formerly known as CCAC and that's in Oakland it's in Oakland California lovely campus with trees and and uh, studied lots of different things didn't really settle in one media or another I, I did lots of drawing and painting and then I worked in film a little bit who are some of your greatest influences one artist that comes to mind is a uh, Brent Cousy. I, I really, um, I love the idea of refining work until into its most important kind of pure elements, and you know, he really kind of simplified, simplified, simplified those forms. Um, He's a sculptor. Yeah. Modern sculptor. Yeah. And his materials, um, mostly metal, stone, wood, sculpt sculpting materials. I don't think he did anything like uh, wire or found art. That. Yeah, and then kind of on the other side of thing, I think that other side of sculpture, I think that um, I was really influenced by uh, Bruce Connor and mm. Joseph Cornell and mm. people who would um, kind of take things from their environment and put it together in a way. Right, I see. That recontextualized it, and, um, and it seems to be kind of polar opposites in a way. It's like two way different kinds of sculpture. Well, isn't it like that though? Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to answer that question because I love art so much and I love so many different artists. And now I understand you're making art for a festival that's coming up. Yes. So I'm completely consumed by this project right now. I'm making um, a interactive uh, crochet and knit sculpture um, for this year's Burning Man Festival. Wonderful. That's so exciting. Uh, it is a and tree. The title? It's, the title is A Tree Undone. A Tree Undone. And it's um, a tree. And this year's uh, theme at Burning Man is very environmental. The, the theme is called the Green Man, and it's all about kind of examining our impact and on the planet and human impact just, on the planet. Yeah, and also just our kind of our connection mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. um, with you know the forces of nature. I think so. And so you're using crochet. I am. I'm really excited that I've I've kind of found a way to push. You know, crochet it and as a sculpture, sculptural medium, even further, the interactiveness part of this sculpture is what's really exciting to me. Um, the sculpture is a tree, and it has. Show some of the. I show, show some of the pieces and parts that I you've show. gotten so far. Um, the tree is uh, covered. Well, all the leaves are these crocheted and knitted leaves, and they're going to be tied to the, the branches, and these ends are going to be left undone. Hence the title and the participants of the festival are going to be invited to unravel each leaf. So at the beginning of the week, it's going to be a tree full of thousands of crochet and knitted leaves, and by the end of the week, 
they will have all been pulled out and will, the tree will be nothing but just oh, yarn, uh -huh. yarn hanging Beautiful. from the, the branches. Wow. Probably getting very tangled up and messy and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. It's So people interacting with work that was created yeah. by other people. Yes. Isn't that right? You have a call out to I do artists to work on this project with you? Yes, I created a website at uh, pokeydot.com that it talks about the project and on that website I have um, <laughs> on that website I have uh, patterns for leaves both in uh, knit and crochet and then I have an address that you can send them to um, so people from all over the world so far I've, I've gotten emails from where people, they've been coming from um, from Canada and Australia and all over the country and in uh, England um, and people are making the leaves people email me all the time say things like I just made you 30 leaves you know wow I'm gonna pop in the mail for you and you know they're starting to come in there I think that people are still How working many will on them. There'll be on the tree I'm shooting for 3,000 wow that's <laughs> incredible if you want to see Josie creating a leaf in fast motion, watch the next movie.